Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish, and welcome back to the adventures of Count Chaco here in Disciples Sacred Lands. You will feel my power. Whew. So, uh, Ms. Dark Soul, already starting off strong there, I think we decided she deserves an army. She did so well in the last episode. I was not expecting, uh, <laughs> I was not expecting at all for her to win that victory against that Mountain Clan's hero. Uh, and if you missed that, of course, then uh, go check it out on YouTube. I've started a playlist for this series. So, let's see. It is the Dark Souls of having an army. She's all by herself, everything is stronger than she is, and she has to dodge roll not to get hit. Now, she's got three leadership. Uh, what should we give her? Because I don't know how serious of a factor she's going to be. Uh, I think I might just go ahead with the two warriors. Maybe in the ghost. We don't need an initiate because she's going to be handling that. Um, the ghost, of course, we know does paralyze units, which makes it possible for us to take on much more powerful enemies than normal uh, sometimes, especially if it's a powerful single unit like that bear we fought last time. And we're going to be leaning on that a lot with our main party. Um, hmm. On the other hand... Hmm. I'm tempted to give her a wyvern. But... I think I'm going to go ahead and we'll just stick with what we know. Because that is very effective, so. Alright, well, we've got a lot to do because, of course, I did most of the explaining of how the game works um, in the last episode. So I want to make sure that this episode we spend Talk actually making some, uh, you know, some progress in the scenario. Forest elves over that way. Ooh, I see some death mana down there, though. Hmm. So she needs to hang out and follow Count Chaco around, Darkness I think. Fall. Ooh, mountain clans must be coming up this way. I hear the sound of a thief at work. You haven't gotten to see exactly what that sound effect goes with yet. Hmm. Marksman and a fighter. We could take them. What's actually in the town? Well, it's a little more serious just because they have a healer. Hmm. Of course, I guess technically we do. So, one of the things that I prefer to do with, uh, with this game is, of course, your units are going to have um, the maximum experience caps based on the scenario. And, of course, we've seen here everyone in this party is level 2, including Count Chaco, but he can become level 3 because um, champions don't evolve. Your heroes just level up and get more powerful and gain more skills. So, he's on his way to level 3, but it's going to be a while. And I want him to be level 3 at the end of this scenario to make sure that we can uh, take him with us. Because you can import your heroes from one scenario to another. And that is what I would like to do with Count Chaco. He's going to go with us all the way to the end. So... That means that I don't want to share experience if I don't have to. Oof. Oh, good. Uh huh. I don't want Ms. Dark Soul to uh, uh, to steal experience points that Count Chaco could get for the most part until he has all of the experience points that he's going to get because it may be a limited resource. We don't know for sure. 
there might not be enough for him to level up, or there might be just enough. We'll see. He's doing fairly well. So, they're probably, if they're shooting spells at this guy, then my guess is that uh, they've got a hero on the way. Let's hope that maybe they hit him with spells again and then leave them alone and then we'll go down there and pick them off. Oh, we took out this dungeon right at the end of the last stream, by the way. I'll have to show you what we found in there. Okay. We're just going to have her follow the count. Oh, could she not get around? Oh, drat. Okay. I thought I was being clever and that's wasted movement. I should have known from how close the mountains are to the edge of the town. Oh, yeah, so I had just been talking about magical tomes and we found this, the Tome of Elven Lore, uh, which removes the movement penalty for any non-flying unit that tries to pass through forest tiles. So, if we decide to give him arcane lore, that could be a big help. We're liable to find at least a few good items in this map uh, beyond what we've already found, but we have to be careful because you can only take, I think, three items forward with you from, like, when you import a hero. And, of course, uh, you can only equip two at a time. Hmm. So, let's see here. They've recovered a little bit. Fresh blood at last! We've recovered a little bit, too. <laughs> and he is very likely to shoot Count Chaco, but he may go for our specter. Nope, okay, he did the dumb thing. Good. Put your Robin Hood looking ass. He's only gonna get one shot, so. <laughs> there we go, and then we'll steal some of that health back. Not a lot, unfortunately. But for 20 XP? Bad. Hmm. Now, the thing about this... Um, of course, we saw when I took this town up here in the last stream, Galamir, uh, that if there's nothing left in a city when you take it, you will automatically move in and occupy it, which costs no additional movement points. So that means that even if the fight takes you down to zero, because moving into a town or moving one space outside of a town doesn't cost movement, I you will automatically do it. Blood. Unfortunately here, what we have is there is a single fighter in this other party in the garrison, as well as this dude and his friends standing in the gates. So if we beat them, they will not move automatically inside. We'll still have to do a second fight, which sucks. Um, but I don't think that there's any reason to wait because... <laughs> See, look how much healing he just got. Very nice. That was a net gain. So that archer can't kill Count Chaco. Man, I wish we had a haste spell, though. I could paralyze the healer because he's going to go first, but I actually am going to paralyze the archer so that he doesn't get another shot. Just in case he were to go before Count Chaco. That's the Empire unit that just uh, can heal other units, which is pretty great. Come on, guys. There we go. That's much better. Oof. Oh, no. Come on, Count Chaco. You've got to go first now. Get him. Get the little guy. There we go. Good, good, good. Excellent. 
Now, when you have a unit like this that cannot deal damage, um, that can only heal themselves or defend or something like that, uh, it is possible to milk fights like that a little bit in order to heal. Like, for example, if we had one of these acolytes in our party, we could just have all of our other units defend while this guy did nothing because he can't hurt us, uh, and have our unit heal over and over again until we were all the way back to full, which is a slow but smart way to play the game. Uh, however, that's a little bit easier to do, a little bit more efficient um, in the second game. In the first game, uh, there actually is a limit on how much you can do. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that it's like maybe like 10 turns or something like that if you if you don't defeat the enemy party in about 10 turns um, then it will force a, a, a mass retreat so time to research some more spells I'm gonna spend 200 death mana and we're gonna get shadow first yes it will start coming a little bit quicker uh oh oh they're doing a summon you can see what this looks like. They summoned a rock. Oof. Okay. Apparently Ms. Dark Soul thought that was funny. Okay, we've got some parties coming down that way. They're trying to clear that lane, you see. Uh-huh. Well, I was about to say, researching spells and things will get just a little bit easier when we grab this right over here. Let's plant a rod, and there we go. Say so that's 50 more death mana, so now we will be making 125 a turn, which is pretty respectable. You will feel my power. Who oh, okay. does? Um... Hmm. This is one of those cases where we've got people coming down this way. We need Count Chaco to stay mobile. I would also like to grab the experience points from that rock, actually, which is going to be more than this fighter. And theoretically, this is one of the ways you can sort of grind for XP is because um, the AI loves to say And so that means that as long as they have 100 runestone mana to conjure this bad boy, then we theoretically can grind it for infinite experience. And it's worth more than this fighter. So what we're going to do, yes. Ms. Dark Soul's going to come around and take this town for us. That'll get her a little bit of experience. But we're not losing anything on Count Chaco because he's going to go up the other way and he is going to grab that rock and put it out of our misery. Oh, wow. Very poor showing from some of our folks here. Guys, you can't miss like that. There we go. She picked up the slack. Uran says the only passage that leaves these mountains is by following the road beyond the river, my lord. Indeed, that's what we're here to do. Okay, any items in here? No? Okay. So we're gonna have her step right back outside, oh, and then yes. Chaco is gonna step inside, and we're gonna heal him. What? Going through the door and crossing the river? I don't know about that. Okay, now this is where I am going to save because we don't know what that party coming up behind the rock has got. Now, if everything goes well, rocks have pretty decent uh, initiative, and I think that it might be a 60. So Count Chaco is going to go, and then the rock is going to go. Okay, it's 55. So he's about the same as these guys with the uh, the banner equipped. So he's probably going to get in one hit. Uh, you can see that he's wounded here from the, the fight with those peasants. Nested in the peaks of mountains, rocks can be called upon to help the mountain clans in times of war. They last for one turn, so if we don't kill him this turn, next turn he's going to disappear anyway. All summons are like that. 
Okay, so he's going to get in one good hit, and then the Spectre hopefully will paralyze him. And we may get lucky if both of our zombies go first. Nope. Okay. Since they had the same initiative as I was hoping that we might, and then, you know... There we go. 10 XP. And that is better than what we would have gotten for that fighter, so... Right, and I'm actually going to move him back a few spaces here. There we go. So that makes it very unlikely that this fellow is going to catch up to us this turn. Yes! And then she can step inside, and she can take advantage of that city's regeneration bonus. Oh. Okay, I can see. Aha! They've got a cavalcade of heroes coming along here. It's a good thing we picked a scouting leader. Actually, y'all made the right choice because we are going to need movement to take all these fellas out. Hmm. Okay, this might be oh, where we have to use some spells. So before we summon or uh, research another one, let's see what else we've got. Okay, rust and weakness, as well as summon skeleton. Now, Rust, I don't think we're probably going to need, because right now we are early enough on in the game that I doubt anything they've got has got armor. On the other hand, instead of dealing damage, what we can do is we can cast Weakness, and since we are a Mage Lord, we can cast it twice. We'll put it on both of these parties. And that will last until the beginning of our next turn, so it lasts during theirs as well. That means that uh, if we go up here and hit Radulf and defeat him and then don't have enough movement left to take uh, Hadun Firehearth as well, then uh, during his turn, if he walks down through the here and hits us, then he will still have that spell on. Still be debuffed, which is great. Use her to scout for a little bit as we see what's over here. We've got a dungeon, a ruined castle, and that is a wyvern and a warrior. Ah, oh, our own you people. Feel my power. Okay. Hmm. Well, the only other thing I think we could really do is she did pick up this holy armor scroll, and I left it with her because Count Chaco can't use scrolls anyway. Only Mage Lords can do that, and that is an ability that is inherent to the class. You cannot get the ability to use staffs or scrolls as a skill from leveling up, because then that would just kind of... I guess, like, that's what differentiates um, the Mage Hero, so they don't offer that. So, holy armor... Uh, gives you 20 armor, so it reduces all damage that you take by 20%. I could cast that on Count Chaco's party, but I'd like to save it if I could, because we don't have a similar spell. Um, and we might need it later for a more important battle, like, for example, uh, the sort of boss battle we have coming up with the target that we have to kill in order to win. So I'm going to save it again. We're okay. That one zombie is down by, what is that? 49 hit points. Mm, I could heal him to full, but I think what I'm going to do is wait until we fight the first battle, and then we'll see what's in the second one. Okay, we're not going to be able to get to that guy without going through this one. That's what I wanted, unfortunately. We're going to have to do them in order. I wanted to hit that guy first, because I saw him. That's a scouting hero as well. You saw his little crossbow over his shoulder. So, he's a shooty boy, and he's going to aim at Count Chaco. Um, this is a warrior lord. Fresh so he's going to hit our last. zombies and weaken them, which will make the second fight harder. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, I thought he was a warrior lord, but no, he's not. This is a proud dwarf. Okay, so this is their rod planter. This is their rod planting hero. Um, so... I said in the last stream that all of the different rod planting heroes for each of the sieves has a different identity or special ability. Uh, so ours is the Banshee, who can paralyze people just like our Spectre can. Then you have uh, the Proud Dwarf for the Mountain Clans, which is the only rod planter who can actually deal damage. 
He actually has a physical attack, and he's a melee unit. So, yeah, it's kind of reverses the strategy. Instead of, most of the time, you don't give him another uh, fighter like this. Instead, you put him in front because he does the same damage, uh, or even more, and has the same amount of hit points, so you put, like, a mage or something behind him. But that's okay. That's just going to make this fight a little bit easier because, yes, he's going to uh, deal some damage to us. We went in expecting that. Oh, yes, he missed. Good. So if we paralyze him, that'll be the only hit that we take. But he doesn't have a full party because, of course, he is not a warrior lord. He only has one leadership. Excellent. Okay. There we go. Good. And of course you saw here, just like I discussed in the last one, where our zombies are divided up, they can both hit that, uh, the middle square, the middle tile, and the, uh, across the aisle, as it were. Oop. He drained nothing. So they were able to gang up on this dwarf and do a number on him and take him down very quickly. If they had been spread out, this battle could have been a lot more drawn out and we could have taken more damage. Okay, he's at 150 out of 575. That's not bad. Ooh, he was carrying a life potion. Very nice. Okay, I'm going to call that a win. So let's make sure we don't have to do that a second time. Okay, now this fella is going to have a full party. Ironically, the hero himself may be the least dangerous part of it because he's probably going to shoot Count Jocko. Um, even if he shoots our Spectre, he's probably only going to get one shot because we're going to paralyze him. Uh, Count Jocko, of course, will drain from the entire party and heal himself, so that means that if he does get shot, it's not a huge deal. Actually, I would rather him get shot than the Spectre. Um... On the other hand, of course, we're not going to be able to get to this guy because he's going to be in the back row. Fresh I'm going to take a chance last. and not heal that zombie. Let's see what his party comp is. Oh, wow. Gross. Okay, he doesn't have a mage or another archer or anything. He's got a full front line of warriors. Okay. <laughs> All right, well... need to take that guy down first because his HP is so much lower that if I don't, I'm a fool. Yeah, he's got a wall of dudes. That is classic. Gotta hit this middle one. Oof, oof, big oof. Okay. Okay. So if we paralyze this guy... go. Okay, that's good. Now, the problem is the archer might choose to take him out. And we still need to work on this fellow here in the center, even though he's paralyzed, because as long as he is alive, this zombie cannot attack this dwarf. Hmm. Okay, and you saw here, see, this, uh, this fellow got smart and decided to shoot the zombie, and we got lucky and he missed. But he got smart and tried to finish him off. So since he's not going to shoot Count Chaco again, he's probably going to shoot that zombie. I think I'm going to have to paralyze him, and we're going to have to rely on the lower initiative of the dwarves versus our higher initiative to try and take this dude out first. Because Zombie 1 up here can sustain another hit or two. Zombie 1 can't take another hit. So this is an engineer. See, engineers use their crossbow in battle. Their high mobility makes them good scouts. Yeah. So... 40 damage, 50 initiative. He's slower than other archers, but nonetheless, this is their scouting unit. So he's the Mountain Clan's version of the Nosferat. Okay, good. If this hit lands, then Zombie 2, there we go. Okay, he's safe. And now he can hit this dwarf. Oh, good. That's the best thing that could have happened. We might be out of the woods, because now we have two chances to hit this guy before he goes. And one hit will kill him. There we go. 
awesome. That weakness spell that we cast on them really paid off. Ooh, we got a Hellhound Scroll Potion of Swiftness. Okay. Cool. So we will keep that Potion of Swiftness. It increases a single unit's uh, initiative by 15%. So we can give that to a slow unit, or we can give it to a fast unit to make sure that they go before another fast unit. This we will pass off to Ms. Dark Soul. Um, this will summon a Hellhound. You can see from the color here, the ribbon is red. Uh, red is for the legions, just like black is for the undead hordes, white is for the mountain clans, and blue is for the empire. So this is a summon scroll. I will avenge myself. You will feel my power. Well, he's out of movement and there's nothing that we can really do about it. I wish there was. Phew, okay, good. I was worried that uh, they were going to oh, cast yes. a spell. Like maybe that Ice Storm spell that they cast before. And try to, you know, having seen what's in our party, they might have attempted yes. to... Uh, take that zombie out and that would be a pain because we have to pay like 200 gold to resurrect him there we go. they'll heal a little more overnight that's all the money I'll spend today see hit point regeneration 20% so that will uh, reduce the amount of money we'll have to spend tomorrow yes. and then we can keep going party coming up. This is kind of another way that you can sort of infinitely grind experience is, I mean, as long as they keep hiring dudes, we can keep killing them. Let's see what's down here. And it looks like nothing, actually. It genuinely looks like nothing. So she's going to have to come back over this way. You can see she can't get very far because she's going to have to move on the water. She's not a flyer, so. You see our ridiculous little, like, bone boat? It's so cute, like a bath toy. And theirs looks like a Viking longship with a dragon figurehead. Yes! Mm. While he is healing, Ms. Dark Soul may have to intercept over there. Talk is fun. Yeah, I'm you gonna keep her mobile. I'm gonna move her up this way where she can get to them. Also, where she will be able to get back to the town if it turns out to be the other way around. Let's see what they do. Oh, that's just a thief, so we'll take him out. And that way, Count Chaco can go on with what he's doing. Because this guy's nothing. March. Free experience points. The Dwarven Thief uh, is slower, but stronger and tougher than other thieves. As is, that's pretty much part and parcel with everything. Uh, mountain clans, you know, actually. Oh, crud. He's gonna get another hit, that sucks. Maybe I was hoping that other warrior could have gone first, but he didn't. That's okay. Everybody lived. And um, honestly, if she can level up all of her units, that would be great. Oh my God. Ah. Okay, excellent. Don't have to worry about him. Thieves aren't much of a threat. What mostly what they do is like not attack you, but inconvenience you. 350 gold. We can heal that guy for 243. And this one for 66. And have 50 left over. Excellent. Dwarf and an axe thrower. Let's go over here to this shop. We've not been in one of those yet. Ta da! Check out. They have some really cool art for the shopkeepers. Tralar the Alchemist. Good day. Take a look around my store and let me know if anything catches your eye. Well, boy, do I have a deal for you, because I would like to sell you uh, this valuable gold ring for 200 gold. And they give you a dummy button here you have to click through because there is no buyback. 
if you sell an item, it is gone. Notice that it did not appear in the shopkeeper's inventory. But they have uh, five life potions, ten potions of restoration, and ten potions of healing available. 150, 300, 400, that sounds about right. So if we need valuable, valuable potions, we can come there and get some. That is an ogre. Which means we are going to save. Uh, ogres are pretty powerful. You can see they take up two slots. Uh, they have, I think, 350 hit points. But what's more important is they do over 100 damage per attack. So the only reason I'm even thinking of attacking this fella is because we have a specter who can paralyze him. So he's probably going to get one hit on us, and it'll be a big heavy hit. But then if we keep him paralyzed, we'll whittle him down over the next couple of turns and we'll win. And he's worth quite a bit of XP for Count Chonko. Fresh blood at last! 300. I thought it was 350. Yeah, often stalking voyagers in narrow passes, ogres are as strong as they are thick-skulled. Does 130 damage, but his initiative is 20, which actually means... See, because our specter's 22, ooh, they may go first, may not get a hit at all. Um, the ogre is, like, I hate fighting them because they're so deadly, but, oh, yes, yes, we went first, awesome. That's it, okay, good. Uh, but you can see from the character portrait over here, I previously compared this art style to, like, old Rankin-Bass animation, like Thundercats and uh, the old Lord of the Rings movies and stuff like that. Um, the ogre specifically is why I think that, because this ogre, to me, looks very much like the ogre from Flight of Dragons, which, if you have never seen that old Rankin-Bass film, I highly recommend it. Also a good book. But the movie is a uh, movie is a pretty good adventure. And there we go, 77 experience all in one fell swoop. In this case, swooping is great. That took all of our movement, but who cares because we got a bunch of XP. Hmm, there may be something there. I see trees, so there could be a break in the mountains. But it looks like over here it may dead end. What's that? Two zombies and a skeleton. Oh. Okay. So the skeleton is the upgrade the of the zombies. If we were able to get up to level 3, zombies can be upgraded to skeletons and then to skeleton champions. Um, they are much more powerful, but since he's in the back row and is a melee unit, that means that we can paralyze him while we work on the zombies if we want to attack, and he might not be able to hurt us, which would be great. Yes! Okay, we're going to have... Rod sticker come over this way. I'm gonna have Rod sticker stick her neck out when, once we clear this pass. Now see, he's not moving this hero. Um, this may be a computer placed um, like party that is rooted to the spot. So he's the mountain clans have control of this, but can't move him. Um, so he is guarding this area back here, but if we can get through there, we can steal this Stop life mana. To me. Yes. Now, of course, the life mana does us no good because we can't access third level spells or higher. But it'll mean that he doesn't have it, and he might be able to access something that requires life mana, so we'll see. Right now, I'm going to stick Rod Sticker over here. And this dark soul is going to go to town. Go, and her warrior can rest in darkness. Count Chaco, what are we going to do with you? If I go across the lake, that's about all that we're going to be able to do this turn, but... Okay. There is something over there, so... Let's pick it up. Okay, our first artifact. So the ogre was guarding something valuable. Um, yeah, so he does not have um, artifact lore, which is the skill needed to use artifacts. But if he did, or if he acquires it later, this rune stone, when equipped, causes the leader who is using it to receive 10% less damage from attack. So it is 10 armor. And what do we 
have here two orcs and a ghoul. Okay. That could be a pretty nasty slugfest. We'll come back for that later. I think for now I'm going to head back up this way. Because since he is our main hero, I don't want to get too far away um, if, the, uh, if the mountain clans come back down that way. So, yeah, I think the next spell we probably need to research is Curse of Nigrail. Um, that's going to reduce the targeted party's damage by 15%. So, we don't have an armor spell, but we do have a you-don't-hit-us-as-hard spell, which is good. If we do gain an armor spell, they stack, because of course one's going to target the enemy party and one's going to target us. Go ahead, since we don't see any more um, mountain clans, I'm going to summon or uh, research another spell. I keep saying summon instead of research because when I click into the screen, the first thing I see is summon evil ant. And that's what we're going to research. There we go. So next turn, we'll probably research plague and then we'll research stone rain. And then we will be done and all of our mana for the rest of the scenario can be saved up uh, to cast spells rather than learning them. Let's see, we have all of the buildings we need for right now. I'm gonna save our money just because. You will feel my power. I don't think they need to do anything else. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you found us. Welcome. I'm glad so many people seem to be interested because, uh, honestly, between the age of this game and the fact that it's just kind of like a, a cult classic, yes, I know that there's a pretty dedicated little fan base to it. Uh, you know, people who love it just as much as me, but it's not huge, so I wasn't sure how all this series would land. Well, I'm glad. Oh, thank you. Yes, please do stick around because... There will be more of this. We're going to be at this for a while because I'm playing through the entire Undead Hordes saga. Alright, Count Chaco, let's see here. Okay, we've got a Dwarf, an Axe Thrower, and a Tenderfoot, and then that's just the Dwarf and the Axe Thrower. Either of those would probably be an easier battle, but this guy's going to be more experienced, and I see treasure back there. Hmm. Hmm. You know what I think I might do is actually, instead of researching Pestilence, I think I'll use Curse of Nigrail on these fellas. And let's go down there and ruin their day. Oh! Oh crud, he doesn't have enough movement. I just wasted that mana. I'm a dummy. Okay, well let me... Let me fix that. Yes! Who dares? Okay, well, if that's the case... Actually, at least I can fight a battle this time if I go this way, so... Fresh blood at last! Yeah, I'm gonna hit him. That way we can do something with the rest of this turn. <laughs> the the Tenderfoot's almost certainly gonna boost the Axe Thrower. Yep, that's what I thought. And they'll get one boosted hit on us, and then we will paralyze them. Oh, nice. Oh, good, and he hit Count Chaco instead of the Spectre. Well, so that's about the best that that first round could possibly have gone. The only thing that could have gone better is if the Axe Thrower had missed too. Oh, zombies, come on. Oh, oh good, he missed again. I cannot believe that. I was about to complain if both of the zombies had hit him, then he would have gone down and wouldn't have gotten a hit, but... Well, let's get rid of the threat first. And then... We got through that without any damage. Oh my goodness, 29 XP. Ooh, which race is my favorite? I like all of them. It's really hard to pick. In Disciples 1... Um, mm, it's between the Undead Hordes and the Empire. I really like the way the Empire plays because they have the healing units. Um, but 
but I like the story and the aesthetic of the undead hordes because my soul is, is black like that, so. How's her zombie doing or her warrior? Okay, he's doing okay. See, I like both of them. Um, I think the Empire is easier to play, uh, but I, I probably overall I like the Undead Hordes a little bit better. I think their story is very interesting. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to stick to what I said. Let's go get those guys. Let's take these fellas out. And actually, since we have mana left over... I'm going to hit them with weakness, too. There's no reason not to. And it helped a lot in that other battle. And he's getting close. Look at that. He's getting very close. Fresh blood at last. In the second one, I really enjoy playing the elves, but... Ah, uh, see? Now here is where Count Chaco is going to have a hard time. Oh, yes. Oh, this is a different skeleton. Oh, I thought this was the skeleton warrior, like, upgrade for the zombies. Oh, I forgot. This is the, the neutral archer skeleton. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, well, see? Great minds think alike. Mmm. So, unfortunately, yeah, the zombies I knew he wouldn't hit. I just wasn't even thinking. They're all immune to death, so there's just nothing Count Chaco can do because his attack source is death. Big oof. But that's okay. That's okay because he can heal on the next guys. I'm actually going to... They deal more damage. He's only going to do 22. I'm going to paralyze one of these fellas because they're going to hit harder. Yeah, I especially like that you can either choose to like heal a little bit to everybody or a lot to one unit. And then depending on your party comp, you know, and, and which leader you pick and so on, that's gonna... That, that decision is gonna change. Yeah, there's no defend command in the first one. They did add some quality of life stuff in the second one, which I really miss when I play the first one, but it still is good. It's not less for it. The other one is just more for it. Okay, zombies, you've got to stop missing now. Okay, I'm just going to pass with him. Okay, good. That one's down. Okay, so now, this time, I'm going to have to paralyze the archer so that he doesn't get another shot on Count Chaco. And then our zombies should move first. There we go. One will take him out. The other will get a shot on the skeleton. Paralyze him again. And let's finish this. Boom. Okay, that's going to be less experience than I thought, but 43 is still nice. It's because I mistook that for the other skeleton. I forgot, to be honest, that there was a neutral skeleton archer. Okay, um, I'm going to have him head back over here. We can cut through this fella, drain a little bit of life, and head back to town to heal. And then when he gets over there, Ms. Yes. Dark Soul can uh, trade with him and take those scrolls so that she can use them since he can't. Yes. I'm a real fan of that, and that's why we are using the Nosferat as our main hero for them as well. Ooh, we're heading back home uh, none too soon. Oh, yes. Like, because we're going to have to fight this guy when he comes down through here. Now that... That looks like another proud dwarf. So... Yeah, I mean, if you can... If you can heal yourself, that's really great. If you can heal yourself at the same time you're damaging the enemy, that's even better. Like so. There we go. Very nice. Oof. Don't want that to happen again. Oh no! 
no. That's all right. We're only going to do that once. Oh, no. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, that was very close. Oh, he missed twice. Spectre, you're letting us down. Spectre. Gotta do better. Gracious. Okay, well. Now I'm gonna come down and do something I should have done quite some time ago, which is... We're going to plant a rod over here on this snow. There we go. And we will start distributing wasteland over here in this area, and that way it will go through this mountain pass. And anything over there, any mana crystals or gold mines that might be hidden that we can't see, yes. we will still get control of them. Now, Ms. Dark Soul, she's going to stay on her tippy toes to deal with that fellow when he comes down this way. Let's go ahead and research Plague while we've got the mana. Yeah, the Spectre is sus. Spectre is very sus right now. I don't like how many times he missed. Okay, there's the warrior leader. Now, the great thing about fighting the mountain clans is uh, this is not great, of course, when uh, you are playing them, but when they are your enemy, yes, they don't move very fast. So you have lots of opportunities to... Where is it? Here we go. Lots of opportunities to catch up with them. Okay. So Count Chaco still needs to go in here and heal. We're going to let, uh, since these are heroes and not map monsters, we're going to let Ms. Dark Soul deal with them. He's not going to get very far. So I'm going to move her part way to keep her flexible. Who dares? And the rod sticker over here is going to come over here and probably, very probably, stick another rod. Ooh. Oh, that's just snow. For a second, for a hot second, I thought that was a runestone mana crystal. Okay, we have plenty of money. So, there we go. I'm going to put another one. And this one will cut off this snow, which is the mountain clan's terrain, so that will make it easier for this one to expand, and then when the two of them join forces here in the middle, then this one will push out that way faster. Yes! Alright. Come on down, mountain clans. Oop, there we go. That's what I figured they were trying to do, is break that rod, because, see, as I said in the first stream, um, you cannot place a rod next to a resource, um, like a, a resource site, because if a gold miner mount, uh, mana crystal has a rod next to it, the game will not let you place a second one, even if they're not adjacent. So he has to break our rod before he can place his own. But that's fine. Honestly, we don't really care. Because since we have both of these towns, that means that um, this is going to keep our terrain under it anyway. As long as we kill him and don't let him plant his own rod, then we will not have a problem. Alright. Second verse, same as the first. Ooh, this Dark Soul coming through strong. Hey, Ghost, come on. There we go, excellent. Now this fella's gonna go down. Excellent. If that's the only hit that we take, that will be a very good win. And it's looking like maybe... Ooh, come on. Yes, there we go. Awesome. Awesome, they are getting up there. Don't need a whole lot. And she is one movement point away. Drat. Okay, well, that's fine. She's not badly wounded, so I'm gonna have her come down this way and wait. Is An old rod sticker here. Hmm. There's not enough room there to plant a rod, but also it looks like that kind of dead ends at the water and it doesn't go around the corner, so I think that it would be pointless anyway. 
So, yeah, she's just kind of hanging out for a minute. I know this place. Stop talking to me. I was not there. I love the Banshee's voice lines. That layered choral effect. That's so it good. Will feel oh, it is. All right. Let's see what this guy does. Not much. Okay. Good. Now that they've healed for a couple of turns, it's going to cost a lot less for us to pay for the rest of the way. So we'll go up here and take care of this fool and then come right back down. And because I am no fool, I am still going to save it first because we don't know what he has. But actually, hmm... You know, we have plenty of cash. Let's build our guild, because we haven't done that yet. There we go. It's just this open coffin, which I imagine, like, it creaks open and there's a spiral staircase that goes down underground to the hidden room or whatever. Darkness can fall. Now again, see, it doesn't take any movement, so I can just step him outside. And then I'm going to go in here, and we're going to hire our own thief. There we go. Now you can see our thief is much faster than the Mountain Clan's thief, but deals less damage and has significantly fewer hit points. On the other hand, because our thief is like a vampire spawn or something, judging from her portrait, she is immune to death. So the thieves, kind of like the Rod Planters, are all a little bit different, even though they are expendable units and they're not meant to gain levels or anything, which is kind of cool. Yes, master. As you request. Okay, so here is how the thief works. See, we're not guild masters. Uh, we're a mage lord, so we don't have access to the other options. But we can poison their party with an 80% chance of success, reduces the hit points of everyone inside. We can provoke the leader into a duel with a 100% chance of success, which means that we will fight the champion alone without his party. And that's great for finishing off wounded leaders or for getting a few hits in on an important character like um, a, a mage or an archer who would normally be in the back row uh, so that then when another hero comes up to finish the battle, uh, they won't have nearly as many hit points. What we're gonna do though is infiltrate a spy. For 100% chance, see the thief will infiltrate a spy in the enemy army, revealing information about the enemy parties and cities. So there we go. A spy has infiltrated the enemy. Right-click on the enemy parties and cities to reveal information about them. So you can see here, instead of attacking, we have a little scroll. And... Um, it doesn't do it when we do it, as you just saw, uh, so I can't really show you, but that sort of target noise, like an arrow striking a target that we've been hearing in the background, uh, that is the Mountain Clan thieves doing what we just did, or probably like poisoning in neutral parties or something like that, um, where what happens is a little scroll unfurls and a dagger sticks in the middle of it. And it's a, Darkness will come. It's a pretty cool little animation. We just don't get it oh, when, we, when we do that. There we go. Save a movement point, and then we should be able to go up and... Okay, so here we go. Now we can see what he's got. He has a warrior, which is an upgraded dwarf. There's the warrior lord himself in the middle, and a wounded hill giant. So again, we've got a wall of dudes. Hmm. Well... Yeah, me too. No, if I was invited to a poison party, I just wouldn't go. Honestly. Okay, we're going to curse this fella. And then we're going to reduce his accuracy. And then we're going to go up there and we're going to kick his butt. And um, enemy heroes are worth quite a bit of XP, so I'm looking forward to leveling up soon if they keep churning them out like this. So now the warrior, see, has fought numerous battles. These brave fighters are assured of a place beside Wotan. So they deal 55 damage and have 200 hit points, a significant increase over the first level. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. 
Yeah, don't be like those terrorists in the capital yesterday. Wear your masks. Don't go to poison parties. So, um... These are called... I forget their name. They're actually called King's Guards, I think. The Honored Guards of Dwarven Kings. Some are sent on missions commanding armies as they are form uh, formidable combatants. Lots of hit points. You can see 225 at level 1. 60 damage and 40 initiative. So again, slower than other warrior units or warrior leaders, but they hit harder and they're harder to kill. And then we have the Hill Giant. This is their support unit for the Mountain Clans. Their big two-space fella sweeps a tree at the foes of the clans, wounding them immensely. 210 hit points, 30 initiative. So he goes after our warriors, after our mages, but before the specter, unfortunately. He deals 60 damage, but notice here the source is earth because he's clubbing us with a plant so that gives them some diversity so that it's not all coming from weapons yeah also very close to leveling up into a stone giant or rock giant so uh it's a good thing that we are about to take them out let's do it going to deal about the same amount of damage. So I'm going to hit this guy. And then the giant. And I thought that these two would actually... Um... Huh. Yeah, I actually thought that those two would uh, gang up on the top guy. Oh, you missed! Spectre, come on! Spectre, you have one job! Okay, well, the giant's out of the way. Oh, that zombie's gonna go down. Dang it. Uh, Spectre, Spectre, Spectre. You cost us a zombie. Yeah, Spectre is still acting sus, but not pleased with their performance. I think he just has it in for, like, this zombie. For some reason, they don't like this dude, even though he's the one in front of him. Maybe the zombie stinks. Maybe he farts a lot or something, and the Spectre's like, my guy. I'm right behind you. I'm right here. So, see, because he just let him die, and now that it's the other guy, he's like, fine. Now they're back at 100% perform. Oh, never mind. Oh, well, they just knew that Count Chaco was going next. So that's what it is. The theory still holds. There we go. 87 experience. Check that out. <laughs> All right, so we got a spy in, got a lot of XP. Yes. Well done. Master. Yes! We are going to have to start heading over this way and taking a little more territory. Um, I want to explore the whole map, of course, because I want to level up and I want to make sure we get all of, like, the artifacts and items. Hmm. I really do. Uh, because Count Chaco is almost level 3. Yes. He doesn't need a whole lot. A little bit over 100. So he's almost assured of leveling up, but we want to make certain that we find any other good stuff like the rune stone or like this banner of speed so that we can take that with us when we move on into the campaign. I don't want to leave anything good behind. So I think we're going to have to go over there and start penning the mountain clans into their town uh, while we clean up the map. Okay, let's see this fella. Now we have for I forgot because he's controlled by the mountain clans, even though he hasn't moved the entire time. Okay, wall of dudes and an axe thrower. Now thieves being expendable, I don't mind sending out to get lost over here. Hmm. Ooh, looks like we've got another warrior lord coming. Yes. Who does? What I think we might do down here. I am going to grow this city again to level 4. That costs 500 gold, but 
it means that um, the city regeneration rate is now 25%, and if we up level it up again, that'll be 750, but then it'll go up to 30%, which is pretty good. Now, who does? Let's res our zombie. He's used to it, it's happened before. And we're gonna let Count Chaco sit there for at least one turn to yes. recover some health, while Ms. Dark Soul goes out and does a little bit of the work. Let's see, we've got a griffin. Giant. This fella is probably going to come up here and attack our thief. So... She still needs to heal. Let's pop her in here. Oh, how much movement she got? Eight points, okay. That's a reasonable amount. She can still do stuff, so... And what I'm actually gonna do is there's a shop back here. And this is not a super hard battle. I'm gonna send her this way, because since this map is fairly small, uh, this is going to open up... See, you can see the edge there. So this is gonna clear this corner, and um, we'll see if there's maybe a pass behind the mountains, because I do not remember if that connects and she could just come out this way. That would be great. But if not, we'll still have cleared this out and we'll have access to whatever's back there. Because I don't know what's in that shop. So let's go ahead and do that first. Now, of course, she's going to get shot by that Elven Ranger and there's not much we can do about it because she's a mage, so she can't heal. She's not like Count Chaco. And, hmm, They're, they can level up. She's much further away, so I am going to paralyze the archer. Oh, okay, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to take two hits is what I'm going to do. Gross. And yes, yes, you can also steal from shops. Let's talk about that, too. So here's another shop, and yeah, it looks like the mountains probably go all the way across, unfortunately. But we also have this item that we will pick up. Who does? My prince. But yes, notice that when we hover over the shop, you get that same icon, right? So you can attempt to steal whatever is in there. Now, of course, if you fail, you're going to have a bad time. But you can steal stuff, and if you need something really important, or if you just want it, and you don't have enough money to pay for it, or you need the money for something else, you can just save scum until you get the item. Like, no one's gonna Darkness judge you. Darkness will come. Okay, dwarf, kingsguard, an axe thrower, and a tenderfoot. Don't like that. Now, the fact that he did not come after our thief, I think, indicates to me that he's like this party over here. Uh, get a party over here, party over there. Uh, yeah, I think they're rooted to the spot. Hmm. Darkness will come. Well, that's fine, because what we can do is... We can go poison them or something. Yes! The thief's turn oh, will be yes. Since they are not moving, I'm going to give Count Chaco another turn on the bench. Oop. No! Oh, that's actually a pretty good setup because Dwarven Warriors are so much tougher. So they've got one Tenderfoot to boost the Engineer and uh, one to boost the Warrior. Well, we'll get a couple hits on anyway. Oof. It's all right. The thief is a throwaway, so we will weaken this warrior, and then Count Chaco can take care of this guy. Because with as few movement points as they've got, he's not going anywhere after he kills our thief. Even though he didn't step out onto the water. Okay. There we go. I'm probably going to wind up upgrading this city to level five. Uh, but later. Oh, oh no. Well, I should have checked first. 
I'm gonna let him come to us. Because even as a scouting leader, um, he's still gonna take his sweet time crossing that water. Yes, he will feel my power. Oh, it does go around. Awesome. Cool. Okay, we just have to fight a warrior, a skeleton archer, and a ghost. Yeah, we can probably do that. After we heal a little bit. Let's see what's in Malavian's shop, though. Malavian's shop? Look at this fella. Check this out. Like an old elf or something, or tenderfoot, maybe. Good day! Take a look around my temple and let me know if anything grabs your attention. So he's got three scrolls of healing. Very nice. Three scrolls of Hymn of the Clans. That's a Mountain Clans a scroll or spell that increases the initiative by 15%. So it's like a, an in-combat haste. But this is the most important. Check this out. That's going to cost 1,000 gold, but we already almost have that. Banner of Battle increases accuracy by 10% for the whole party. That's going to be really great for our Spectre, because keep in mind, our Spectre's got 70% chance to hit, right, over in Count Chaco's party, uh, so that would increase it to 77. That's a big deal. Darkness from fall. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm tempted to send a thief up there and try to steal that banner, almost. But probably, almost certainly, because it's so expensive, we would have to save Scum. Yeah, that's one of the things that keeps drawing me back to this franchise over and over, is I love the artwork. It really serves to capture the, like, the dark fantasy uh, that I think they were going for. And it just, it's, it's enthralling, and I've never seen it in another game. I've never seen another, uh, another game use the same studio or artists, which is a shame, because I love it. All right, let's stop pussyfooting around. Let's uh, let's do a big hit. What do you say? Thirty death damage. There we go. That's a good chunk. Fresh blood at last. Let's get Count Chaco some fresh blood. <laughs> He's not powerful enough to have taken all those tender feet. Tenderfoots? Tenderfeet? Uh, this hobbit's out in one shot, unfortunately. But when he levels up, he will be. There we go. If we paralyze this Yahoo, then they don't mean anything, so. Okay. He healed a little bit from that. Not as much as I'd like. 53. See, look at that. Keep them coming, Mountain Clans. Now we just need 76 experience points. One or two more good fights like that, and he'll be max level. And I'm with her, I'm just going to wait. And he's going to gain another skill when he levels up to level 3, but I already know what that skill is going to be. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get there. So what I'm going to do is... With her, I'm going to buy this banner, and I'm going to take it to him. Because since he's only got Banner Bearer and he doesn't have, like, artifact lore or whatever, then, I mean, he's got an empty hand, oh, yes. so if we have two banners, like, we might as well use both of them. Yes, I'm That's true. Yes! But I'm always nervous in the first game, at least, to um, to farm that way, just because, like, in the second game, they did away where there was a turn cap. No, no, absolutely. Hey, we got Backseat Gaming turned on here. If you have, uh, you have suggestions or comments about the game, or if you see something I don't, absolutely, you let me know. Because it's a game that I love as well. Oh, and yeah, um... I mentioned a little while ago that you can do things like, you know, the tender feet, they can't do anything but boost, so if there's nothing else that they can do, then they will just kind of, you know, hang out. 
and you can farm them for hit points, and if you have an Empire Healer, like an Acolyte or something, then you can do the same thing. But the difference between Disciples 2 and uh, Disciples 1 is that here there is a turn cap, where um, if you spend too long doing that, then uh, you will retreat from the battle. The computer will, like, you don't lose the battle, but the, the computer makes you automatically, like, run away from the battle which sucks. And I can never remember how many turns it is. I think it's 10, but it might be 5 or something like that. It's that if you pass a bunch of units and don't kill them after a certain number of turns, then, you know. And I don't want to lose that fight and have to spend another turn and have my movement points. Oh, wall. They hit us with an ice storm. But yeah, I just don't want to waste resources. Yes. Oh, okay, so every turn there is, like, an increasing chance that the spy you planted will be discovered. Um, and because this is a random roll, uh, that means that, like, I could probably load the autosave and our spy might not die. But eventually it's going to happen. So we've lost our spy. That's fine. We can always plant another one. Especially considering that we have these convenient targets right here. I'm actually going to do that. Because we have enough money, it only costs 200 to hire a thief. My prince. And we can use her as bait to lure out some more heroes, perhaps. But since those Mountain Clan's heroes do not move, they are basically free targets to plant another spy and keep one in there. Because it's just too useful to be able to right-click on them and know what's in their army. He will feel my power. Let's see, we've got 775 death mana. What do you say we research our last spell? Stone Rain. There we go. Now, all of the mana that yes. we have left for the rest oh, of the map yes. is going to be ours to cast spells with. Okay, they didn't hit us too bad. This is going to make a big difference because that accuracy... See, look at that. Since it's a scaling 10%, that's going to be 82 for most people. 77 for the Spectre. That makes a big difference because since the strategic combat part of Disciples is very much a game of attrition, that matters. Fresh blood and sometimes you get on a bad roll with the RNG here and it almost feels like, like you know, you've all played a game to... <laughs> Well, thankfully, it's Undead Horde's magic, but it's not death magic. Remember, the source is Earth. So, everyone does die, uh, but, you know, it's it's not... It's not death magic, technically. But yeah, we've all played those games where sometimes it feels as though what's listed here under your chance to hit is actually your chance to miss. And Disciples can be bad for that, just like any game that's rolling for RNG in the background. So... Um, the more accuracy, the better. Although it does cap out at 99. You can only have a maximum of 90 armor, and you can only have 99 chance to hit. Uh, you can also, I think, only have 99 initiative as well. It can never reach 100. Okay, so this is our first griffin. They live in the realm of the elves, often used as mounts. They are a serious threat when encountered in battle. You bet they are, because 200 hit points, 95 damage. And they go on initiative 50. Thankfully, that means our zombies will probably go before it does. But it's gonna go before the specter, for sure. So it's gonna get a hit. Big oof. See, look at that. 95 damage. Oh. It gets a hit, and it's a big hit. But Count Chaco is back at full HP. You'd love to see it. I really am feeling like one of our zombies is a little more competent than the other one. There we go. 38. We're getting close. And we should have enough left over to pick this up. Unknown treasure, what could it be? An Incantare Belier scroll. That is the level 2 Legion's summon. So we need to take that back to Ms. Dark Soul as well. Go ahead and get started. Yes. And 
Yeah, we're good for this turn. They're gonna attack our town. Oh no. They're summoning experience points from his Dark Soul. Uh-oh. Whew, that was close. Oh, thank you, because, see, the town provides an armor bonus, so he's got 25 armor, meaning he only takes three quarters of the damage. That's close. So now if we paralyze this rock, everyone will live, and I'm betting someone will level up. Maybe. Because we need... 50, yeah, ooh. Hey, come on, ghost. It's all on you. There we go. That's it. That's it. We love the ghosts. We love them. Oh, spread out a little too thin. Look at that. Oh, he just needs eight points. I need eight points. <sighs> Ghost problems. As you request. And yeah, no, that that actually, that might be it. Yes. It's because the uh, the zombie that is in front of who dares? The zombie that's in front of Count Chaco maybe just doesn't want to look a fool. All right, we're gonna head back over here, and he still has you movement. So we're gonna step outside. Darkness and fall. And let's see. There we go. She needs to keep all of the scrolls. Step inside here. I'm just gonna heal everybody so that we can keep moving. Because we're not really using our money for anything else. We have upgrade buildings that we still haven't built. Uh, but we don't have to worry about them as long as we don't have the unit, so, you know, it doesn't really make much difference. Let's see here. We've got those two fellas. Hmm, we've got the giants. We also have this down here. In this corner. I hunger for blood. I think we need to go this way, because that's going to dead end, and then we can come back and won't have to go down there anymore. Yes! She can go back inside and hang out. And then we're going to take her this way while we have a reprieve. Uh, we are going to go through this fella. Everyone's going to level up, hopefully. And then um, we can cut a path back through here, through the ruined castle and that other unit. Who dares? Yes, master. This ghost is going to give us a hand. Ooh. Another summon. Gonna try and take the town again, maybe? Summons cannot actually claim towns, but they could defeat the party that's inside. Yep, they're gonna hit her. Okay. Ooh, saved by the town's armor again. Saved again. That's gotta suck for the mountain clans. They've gotta hate that. Come on, ghost, do it. Yes. I cannot believe that the exact same results twice in a row. You'd love to see it. There we go, and now we have a specter. And our warriors are 12 points away from becoming zombies as well. I might leave her there and see if... Ooh, yeah. If they're going to send another proud dwarf down there or something, I'm going to use it to level up. Okay, let's go down this way. Let's save our thief for now. And then what we're going to do... My power. I hate to spend the money because he would heal for free when he levels up, but I'm going to do it anyway because I, I doubt that's going to happen exactly the same three times in a row where if they summon another rock... And anyway, a rock won't level him up because he's worth 11 points, and this guy needs 12. So, um, but I'm, what I'm hoping is that maybe fighting the Proud Dwarf when he comes down here, or the Kingsguard, or whichever, is going to level them up, and then our zombies will be immune to death when we go into this fight, which means that the Wyvern's Breath 
cannot hurt them. No, the Spectre doesn't need XP. Oh, yes. The Spectre's done because they're capped out. That was a circuitous route. Alright, let's see what the clans do. Okay, they're gonna waste a hundred runestone mana on our thief. Good. Great. Love to see it. Okay. Here comes this jerk. Now it's Count Chago's turn, but... Okay, that is a King's Guard. I thought so. I was thinking it might be a Proud Dwarf, but he looked like this guy, so that's a King's Guard. Oh, and they did the Wall of Dudes with boosts again, so... Some, yeah. Not all of it, but, but some of it. Okay. Let's... Let's do this first. Now, they added a button for this in the second game, um, but you can also, if you have a path already laid out, you can hit M on your keyboard to just follow the path and have your hero go wherever they're going to go. Oh, dance. Okay, let them come to us for one more turn. Uh, well, I mean, that's true. They might, because they wouldn't be sharing. Okay, we've got almost a thousand mana, so we are going to use Curse of Nigrail on these orcs. And we're going to hit them with a weakness, too. Because why not? And in fact, I'm kind of tempted. You know what? Let's, uh, we've not gotten to see it yet. Let's see Stone Rain. Boom. Literally just rocks fall, everyone dies. You love it. You love to see it. Fresh blood at last. Okay, let's take them down. Okay, so. Orcs of the small mouth status are used as sword fodder by the tribe chieftain. Yeah. <laughs> it just summons a bunch of gigantic dead birds that splatter all over the place and deal damage. So they hit pretty hard. Um, they're slow, but uh, the most important thing is they have lots of HP, so they're hitting you hard the whole time that they're going down hard, too. This ghoul, though, this is the problem. Wandering in graveyards to prey on the dead or the living. Ghouls are dangerous undead creatures. They are immune to death, and they paralyze just like our Spectre does. They go on the same initiative. You can see the source is mined. They can reach any unit. Now, thankfully, they have a very low chance to hit. A ghoul has a 60%, whereas a ghost starts out with 65. And our Spectre has got 77 now. This ghoul, thanks to our spell, actually only has 54. So, with luck, they won't be a problem. <laughs> Okay, zombies doing good. They're gonna go now. I'm tempted to paralyze him, and I think that I should. Because if I don't, then for sure he's gonna paralyze somebody else. Okay, one more round of this. We're gonna hit again. That's rough, buddy. Very rough. Well. You know, I deserve that. Oh, good, he missed too. It's gonna say I should have, um, I should have paralyzed all the orcs anyway, because all that he can do is paralyze, so if the orcs go down, he's, there's nothing he can do to hurt us. Well, anyone in this party except for the orcs, and the orcs are dead, so they don't count. Oh my lord. You know what? That's fine. I deserve that. As bad as I am with the, the terrible puns and my video names and stuff, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> hey, there we go. Alright, Count Chaka leveled up. That joke sounds like the answer to one of the lever puzzles in Betrayal and Antara. Yes, master. 
speaking of which, um, if you are not already following or subscribed here on Twitch, please do. And uh, be sure to join me for other series on Saturdays and Mondays as well, because we've got more Betrayal and Antara coming up, and we also have plenty of Final Fantasy VII left um, in the next couple of weeks. Okay, let's see here. So... We can choose Artifact Lore again, we can choose Arcane Knowledge, we can choose Toughness, but we have a couple of new options. One, Keen Sighted. The leader will see further in the Fog of War, so they will clear out more of the darkness as they move around the map. But this is the one we are going to take. Leadership. Allows the leader to take one more unit in his party. This will increase Count Chaco's leadership to four, meaning that we will be able to have another slot filled. Yeah. Yeah, see, so now he's got 115 hit points, he's got 20 damage base, and he can have a fourth party member. Okay, oh, we'll get him yes. in just a second. Send him over this way. Now he's doing well enough that, um, like, that fourth party member can be just about anything, really. I wonder what's in there. It really does. Every time that you get it, it's like, oh boy, yes. oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. As you request. Let's poison these guys. There we go. Ta-da, see. And it deals about, what is it, maybe 20% of their da damage or 20% of their health? Maybe 15? He will feel my power. So we will have to decide what we want to go in that other slot and then probably build the building for it. But first... Let's do this. March. Hey, listen. I just calls them as I sees them. Okay. I'm gonna have to go on this guy in the middle first. Because both of them can hit him. Oh, wow. I'm very surprised they're splitting up their attacks, because if they hadn't, that guy probably would have gone down. Okay, so our Spectre now is going to paralyze this fella. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's very bad. Okay, well, uh... Big oof. Big oof. Okay, she deals 35. <sighs> I'm gonna have to hit this guy to make sure he goes down. Okay, miss, miss, miss. Oh, crap. Oh, man. See, that one... That one paralysis... Yeah, I did save, and actually, I'm, I'm tempted I might fight this battle again, I think. Because uh, doing that will robs me of him becoming a zombie, and it will cost another battle for that to happen. Whereas if they both become zombies, then uh, they will heal, so we don't even have to go back to town, and she can just keep at what she's doing. So yeah, I'm probably just going to fight this one again real quick. think that I shall. Yes. And uh, you know what? That might help a little bit. And you know what else might help actually? Let's go ahead because those Tenderfoot units only have 60 health anyway. So if we hit them for 30, then Ms. Dark Soul will probably take them out in one shot if she hits both of them on her first turn. And that'll make a big difference as well. Okay, one more again. Now see, it's a lot easier to do that in this game. Like, one of the things I love about Disciples is if a battle does not go your way... Um, you can load it and fight it again 
and not worry too much about it because uh, you have this squad-based combat, kind of like Tactics Ogre or something, versus, um, you know, if we were playing Heroes of Might and Magic, for example, that's a big battle to fight over because you're moving whole armies. In here, each unit can only do certain stuff, and there is no tactical movement, and that makes a big difference. It makes it easier and faster, so you can do it in front of an audience. No, actually, the RNG does reset when you reload. Otherwise, he would have missed that paralysis again. See, it was her that missed. So yeah, you do get a new seed, which is why you can do that. There we go. That's much better. Ah, there we are. Okay, so now she's got a halfway decent party uh, and is on her way. You'll see she takes 750 to level up, whereas uh, Count Chaco only took 575. That's because she deals so much more damage. I still think he's a better hero, though. Who dares? Don't say that to her. I don't want to hurt her feelings. She's been doing very well. I just prefer Nosferots to, uh, to Lich Queens. His performance isn't better than hers. Okay, our first staff. Awesome. The Staff of Thunder. So, uh, this is what I was talking about in the previous stream, right? A scroll is used up when it is cast, but does not cost any mana, just like Dungeons & Dragons style, right? A staff costs the same amount of mana as the casting cost for the spell that it replicates, but... It is not used up when it is cast. You can use it once per turn or twice per turn if you are a mage lord to cast that spell. And so if you already know that spell, in this case, Lightning, which is an Empire spell, deals 15 points of air damage to the target units, then you could use this staff to cast it a total of four times if you are a mage lord. So that is what that life mana is going to be for, and that's why we need it. But first things first, we have to get that back to uh, Ms. Dark Soul because she can use it and Count Chaco there cannot. Nice. Let's poison them again. Let's we'll poison them every turn. You cannot actually kill units by poisoning, I don't think. Like, as I recall, I don't believe that you can do that. Um, but you can get them down to, like, one hit point. And in that case, uh, like, that's a way that thieves are really excellent support units. My prince. Go. Move a As little bit. You yep. Poison them again. Why not? There we go. Check it out. Now, can she get to them this turn since the thief moves? Yeah, no, not quite. But see, now everyone in the party is immune to death damage because the warriors upgraded to zombies. They got that immunity. So the wyvern is a non-issue now. The warrior is the only thing that can actually hurt this party. There we go. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is how it seems, right? Like, of course, we can presume that they are just, they're eating on their own time, right? Like, they've got their own beef jerky or whatever, and she's just slipping poison into it as they're doing that. But uh, because of the artwork that it shows us, that really is what it looks like. It's just like, here, have a drink. Have a drink. And that's true, yeah, these warriors are not hired for their brains, because otherwise um, they wouldn't volunteer to become zombies. Let's kick some ass. Take this guy out first. Oh, of course, the very first thing he does is a brand new zombie is miss. And if he had hit, we would take no damage from this fight. Wow. Ta-da! Immune. So we're definitely going to paralyze that guy. Yeah, she's just so cool to hang out with. She's like that cool older sister who will, like, you know, buy you drinks when you're only 20 and it's technically not legal. 
you think that she's cool, uh, like, when you're a kid, because you don't understand, like, why society has certain expectations, and it's not until you actually become an adult and you realize that she was contributing to the delinquency of a minor, like, that it's just like, oh, yeah, she probably shouldn't have done that, probably shouldn't have let me drink. I don't know, there's a whole narrative now for this thief. Okay, so we're gonna heal for a little bit while uh, Ms. Dark Soul does her own thing because you'll see Count Chaco is at max. So it does not matter who kills Want for the rest of this scenario because he can't gain any more XP anyway until the next map. So it's like, whatever. But what are we gonna put here? What are we gonna put here? Well, okay, yeah, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, right? Right. Some countries are gonna, it's gonna be 16, you know, but, but I go with what I know. Okay, so we cannot have a wyvern um, because we only have one space. But we could take any of these other three units. We could put another zombie in the front row. We could have two specters which could be very powerful, paralyze two different units. Um, or we could add an initiate and we could deal some more area damage to everybody. So... I mean, yeah, but we were just talking about how foolish these people were, so obviously the warrior in this scenario, uh, like, we already know that he's, you know, we already know he's not the brightest crayon in the box. Double Spectre? I'm hearing Double Spectre. Double Spectre is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Wall of Dudes is a good solid strategy, but we can do more interesting things. And also, the Initiate is, is good because he's going to deal more damage overall than Count Chaco will and give us someone at Initiative 40. But we also already have someone who is dealing death damage to all enemy targets. That's why we didn't take an initiate in the first place. So, all right. Then, let's take another ghost. Ta-da! Doesn't that look so much better already? Don't you love it? Yes. Okay, let's see here. This way a little bit. And I do have the music volume adjusted, but let me know if it's a little bit loud for y'all. I can always change it some more. Okay, let's see what's in here. Visit Ruin, you have a 90% chance to not get caught. <laughs> All right, success. There we go, the Ruin has been spied upon. Now, unlike placing a spy in an enemy army, when you spy on a Ruin, it stays spied on. So... We don't have to do that again. They can't find the spy and kill it, which is one of the reasons why it only has a 90% chance of working instead of a hundred. Yes! <laughs> Fair enough, honestly. Okay, so this party is probably set to go in here, I think, because we have a warrior, we have a ghoul. The paralysis is going to be dangerous, but the warlock literally cannot hurt us because... That's the upgrade of the Initiate, and his weapon source is, damp is death, so the warrior is the only thing we have to worry about. If we take that out, it doesn't matter if the ghoul paralyzes somebody, especially considering that um, like the warrior can only hit one target per turn, and the ghoul can only paralyze one person, so like somebody is still going to get a turn. I mean, hey... You could have three specters, I'm just saying. Boom. There we go. We just won this fight. Because now they can't do anything to us, see? Ta-da. I'm gonna paralyze the ghoul to make it a little easier on us. But yeah, imagine if you had a different hero type, like if we went with the Death Knight in the front row, for example. Um, you could have, like, a Death Knight and a Zombie, and then you could have three Spectres in the back row or something. I mean, dang. <laughs> I 
What's all right because in Disciples 2, they added the Wraith upgrade, which allows your specters to uh, paralyze everybody. So we got justice in the end. Okay, another artifact. Awesome. So the Rune Blade increases the leader's damage by 10%. It's basically the flip side of the rune stone. Darkness will fall. Oh, they're gonna summon a rock to uh, attack that giant, methinks. That's okay, because we're about to head that direction. Gosh, that animation was slow. <laughs> the rock did not succeed. If you walked 10 miles to get to Warlock College, uh, first of all, you're a terrible Warlock because you should have been flying at the very least. Well, you did some significant damage. Might want to get over there and grab that XP for our new ghost before they get deaded. Okay, let's see here. What we can do is... I'll leave this staff for her um, because... That's what we were waiting on anyway, because he can't use it. So, let me go ahead and we will heal these fellas. And I'm actually going to go ahead and there we go, I'm going to max this city out to 5th level. You can see all the little yellow flags indicate that it is 5th level. It's got a moat and everything. 30%. And... It also now grants... I think it's 30 armor? So... Let's go ahead and just go all the way. Yeah, I'm still gonna have to tweak some of these settings. Oh, he's so happy. He's so happy. Well, you boosted the wrong fella, my guy. Boom. We're gonna get one hit on him, and... Ta-da, double paralysis. You love to see it. That healed him almost all the way back up to full. And this fella doesn't have enough hit points left to fill him up, so... We'll just kill him. And that will take our ghost halfway. Excellent. Thank you, Mountain Clans, for softening them up for us. And then Rod Sticker is going to follow along. And you can see what I meant. See, this rod has taken a while, but now most of the snow has gone. It's kind of joined here in the middle, so it's going to start out this way. And any terrain that is not connected to a rod, a town, or your race's capital does not expand. So this snow, if it is attached to something that the mountain clans control, it will push back against the wasteland. This snow can't do that anymore. So this is an inevitability. Eventually we will claim all of this territory. As you can see, we've already passed them up over here. And then this, it's gonna go back and forth a little bit, but there's probably a town over here, maybe not too far away. And once we take that, uh, it's not gonna be a real issue. Crossbow. That's the upgrade of the axe thrower. You're next, yes, buddy. Master. Um, there is a way to do that, yes. Now, the wind conditions are set by scenario, which means that yes. uh, you can't always do it. So the victory condition for this map yes, is not master. to do that. Uh, the victory condition for this particular map is to kill a specific unit. But there are definitely maps where um, convert 60% of the terrain or 75% of the terrain can be a, a viable um, victory condition. And that can be fun. Honestly, those are some of the most challenging maps. Because it can be a little bit more difficult than you think. These guys are going to go down super easy. Spectre will paralyze their skeleton. Boom. 
Come on, zombies. Competence. I demand competence. Well. They're all intimidated by Ms. Dark Soul. Either that or they're slacking off. They think while she's paralyzed, she doesn't know what they're up to. That's probably it. Okay, good. So now we can circle all the way around. We don't need anything else from over here, really. They did have some scrolls, but we don't need them at the moment. So we're going to... No, 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 no. Is that really faster? I thought the thief was in the way, but actually because of the trees and the water, that might actually be faster because there are fewer obstacles. So you can see how much of a penalty um, having to cross water or through forests actually inflicts. Okay, well, she's still gonna go that way. We'll heal her and then move along. Yeah, I think I discussed it in the last episode, uh, but there are several different ways to win, um, like with most uh, kind of 4X strategy games. I don't know that this one technically is qualifies as a 4X because you can win through things like economics um, or technology, but uh, you can win by killing a specific unit or party, by taking a particular town, by looting a specific ruin, um, by acquiring a particular item, um, by converting a certain amount of terrain, or by defeating all enemies, meaning, like, destroying their capitals. That one's actually the rarest, because the guardians that live in the capital cities, um, are very difficult, and so generally, you're actually not going to fight them, and you don't want to. Okay. Oh, yes. He's gonna take some time to get down there, and then we'll let Ms. Dark Soul take care of him. So, yes, they're they're pretty much boss fights because you're talking like you know 900 hit points, 250 damage to the entire enemy party per shot. Uh, their their weapon damage source is life, which means that there's no way to defend against it except armor, and they come with 40 armor in a I think which uh, then combines with the 50 armor in the capital to give them a total of 90, so they only take 10% of all damage you deal to them anyway. So if you hit them for 100 damage, they take 10. Like, that sucks. <laughs> They're very hard. Uh, it is possible to beat them. I've done it before. Uh, but it also, like, it sucks because the capital regenerates 50% of everyone's HP per turn. So it's even hard to fight them with attrition by like summoning powerful summoned monsters and then going in there and hitting them. Um, it sucks. Oh my god, the specter thinks that they can slack off because this ghost is here, but then the ghost is not helping either. Y'all, you have an accuracy bonus. Like, come on. Wow. Y'all gonna suck today, huh? That's alright. That's alright, everybody has off days. There we go, there's something. And we thought Double Spectre was gonna be really great. <laughs> Take him down, there we go. Good. Just a little more, 14 points. 14 points. Hey, a potion of celerity. We haven't seen one of those yet. I love this artwork. I love that bottle. Check that out. Increases initiative by 30%. Pretty spiffy. Oh, huh. Okay, so, well, I figured that the Mountain Clan's capital was over in this direction, but I actually thought that this was going to combine over here. It's been a while since I played the... Um, the Undead Horde saga, so, like, I don't have the map memorized or anything. Oh, there he comes. Trundle, 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 and the water's gonna stop him. Of course. Oh, no, our spy. They got our spy. Okay, well, that also means that there's not really anything pushing back against this wasteland, so... No harm done there. Don't have to worry about that, I guess. Ooh, a 
Titan's Might Potion. 30% damage inflicted. Okay, now see this blue marker right here? There we go. Uh, well, don't worry, it was just our spy. The thief is still with us, thankfully. But So see this blue marker right here? That is a victory target indicator, or at least a quest target indicator. When you see a blue circle or a blue double circle like that around something, it means that's the thing you need to do. So we technically could end the scenario by fighting this battle and defeating this fellow. That's a stone giant, uh, two warriors, a tenderfoot, and an axe thrower. If we take that party out, we win and move on to the next map. Uh, we're going to do that, but not right this second, because uh, we still want to clear this out up here a little bit, and we want to make sure that we are not leaving anything good behind. Like, we already found that rune stone, we found the rune blade, and we found that other banner, the banner of battle. So, you know, that was an important find, and we could very easily have missed out on that. So we want to make sure that we don't miss out on anything else that might be left over. Yes, master. Okay, where is Ms. Dark Soul? He will oh, feel you. my power. Okay, I can stop and heal because he's not getting any. She has a couple movement points left, so what I am going to do is I'm going to pay the deal since we have plenty of money. And then I am going to keep moving. Versus just sitting there. There we go. Now, he should not be able to get all the way down here in one yes, turn, I don't think. Master. But just in case, what we're going to do is, now that this is a level 5 town, you can have up to 5 units garrisoned in this city so um let's see they can level up by the way they do not have to be in a champion's party in order to level up any units anywhere that you have as long as the building has been built can gain levels which is great so i'm thinking why don't we try something different these guys have lots of hit points how about we'll do two wyverns and a ghost? So that way he can paralyze, they can paralyze someone important, and these will do the heavy lifting, but they also have got 225 hit points, and they're going to have 30 armor. So now what that means, though, is we need to use part of the money we have left, and since we are seriously using some wyverns now, I'm going to go ahead and build the cavern. There we go. And that way they will upgrade to Doom Drakes when they get enough XP. Yes. Probably won't be necessary. Probably is going to be a non-issue. But that way, if they do come down and attack this town... Oh, really? This tired old trick again? Come on, Mountain Clans. Okay, they're going to get one good hit on us, and then hopefully that'll be it. I was about to say the Spectre is probably going to ensure... Oh, man. Better paralyze now. There we go. I was going to say the Spectre might not even get to go because if both zombies and Ms. Dark Soul hit, then that would be the end of the rock. But they all missed. I'm glad the Spectre didn't. Okay, Brodolf. Since you are here and it's convenient, uh, let's have cool older sister As you request. go up here and we are going to put another spy in to his army so we can see what he's got. A hill giant, a lore master, and a crossbowman. Okay. Yes! Well, then let's take some of our magic. Let's reduce their damage a little bit, and let's inflict a little bit of damage. And we should be good. I think that's all it will probably take. 
You can see, though, the effect that our spells have, and so being a Mage Lord and being able to cast things twice, you know, if you have the mana, it's going to make a huge difference. And there are some fights that um, they're designed that way where the intent is you are supposed to really pound that party with spells before you hit them. And if you don't that fight, you should expect to lose. It's kind of your own fault. This guy. Ooh, oh no. Come on, Miss Dark Soul. There we go. I'd love to see it. Whew. These zombies. I have to remember they don't have the uh, uh, the accuracy banner that can chop us a lot, so. now, Can you get down here in one turn? No. Can you get up there in one turn? Yes. There we go. That will protect you from spells. And they'll recover a little yes. health. Who dares? Okay. Old Rod Sticker's gonna go up this way because it's time to start heading inland towards the clan citadel. And Marco. We're gonna go over here and heal, and then he's gonna round that corner and off we go. Okay. Miss Dark Soul still has not gotten this staff, I swear. Okay, well, she'll come down next turn and get it. Ooh, and speaking of next turn, uh, I think that this is a good place to call it. We don't have a whole lot left to do here, so next stream, um, we are going to go over and uncover the rest of the map. We're going to see if there's any good artifacts or items we may have missed that uh, we want to take I with us. And then we're going to come down here and take care of Umbolg and move on to part two of the Undead Hordes campaign. So look forward to that, and I will look forward to seeing you there when you join me next Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York and Miami time here in the U.S., and uh, don't forget to join me on Saturdays and Mondays as well for other series. And you can jump over to YouTube if you missed the previous stream. You can find my playlist for this game there as well as playlists with the VODs of all of the other games that I and Specific Pixel have done here on the channel. So be sure to follow on YouTube and hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, and Pillowfort as well. I, I love to hear from y'all and uh, I love to play these games with you. So. I'll see you when we play again, and until then, as always, thanks for playing.